Hello everybody, this is Dr. Christopher White and in this presentation we're going to continue thinking about streams and flooding. So in this video we're going to think about what happens when a stream reaches its base level and this is going to correspond to section 16.9 of your textbook. So if you remember, base level is the lowest point to which a river can erode and the ultimate base level is of course sea level. So when your river hits a base level, be it, be it sea level or an, another intermediate level, the river will essentially lose the capacity to erode because it can't go any lower. So at that point, all it can really do is either transport sediment or deposit sediment. And in most cases, what we will see is the river will typically deposit sediment. Now, the reason for this is, is that most base levels will occur in terrains where the gradient is very, very low. So if you think of sea level, for instance, we know that at the headwaters of our river, the gradient is often quite steep. And as we move towards the mouth of our river, we know the gradient is steadily going to get shallower and shallower. So by the time that we make it to the mouth of our river, we know that the gradient is going to be lower. We know the river is going to be less energetic. And as such, any small change in the river's velocity is going to lead to sediment being deposited. And of course, as we come to the mouth of our river, we know there is going to be a substantial change in velocity, and this is going to encourage large amounts of sediment to be dumped. So the most common feature that we see associated with a river reaching its base level are deltas. So a delta will occur when a river exits into a body of water, and that can be the ocean, a sea, or a lake. So obviously what's happening is we have the water which is moving along our channel here, and of course our water has velocity because it's moving, so it has energy so it can transport sediment. In contrast, the sea or the ocean or the lake represents a near stationary body of water. And so what's going to happen is our river water is going to come down the channel, it's going to hit the coast, and it's going to come to a stop very, very quickly. It's going to decelerate to very, very fast. Now, as this happens, it's going to mean the water loses energy because it's losing velocity. And so the sediment that the water is transporting is going to end up being deposited. And of course, the classic indicate the classic sign of this is the formation of a delta. So the delta itself here is being formed by sediment being deposited by the river as it comes to a stop. Now, what's going to happen is, is the delta is steadily going to build up over time, and the delta itself will actually become land in its own right. And we can see that here with the Nile Delta, and we can see it here with this delta. In theory, you could walk across them. And so what's going to happen is, is the river will then cut channels across the delta so that the water can get into our ocean or our sea or our lake. And these smaller channels which cut across the delta are referred to as distributary channels because they're distributing the water across the delta. Now, over time, what's going to happen is, of course, is the rivers are going to be depositing more sediment along the edge of our delta. And given the right conditions, our delta is going to keep building further out into open water over time. So what's actually happening with regard to sediment deposition at our delta? Well, here's our river it's coming in from the left, and it's moving towards our body of water on the right. And we know that our river is going to start decelerating as it begins to interact with this you know, relatively still water. And because it decelerates, it loses energy, and so it has to naturally start depositing sediment. And of course, it's going to deposit the heaviest sediment first. Now, typically when it comes to mature river systems like meandering river systems, it will very often be transporting sand size clasts, silt size clasts, and mud size clasts. And so when our river begins to decelerate, obviously it's going to deposit the heaviest material first, that's going to be the sand size class, followed by the, followed by the silt size class, and then finally the clay size class. Now, the deposition itself will obviously begin where the river initially enters the body of water. And of course, we know steadily over time the amount of sediment will build up and it will lead to the development of a delta. But there's going to be a lot of sediment deposition right here where the river hits the delta itself. Because remember, the delta is going to be relatively flat. So the water is not going to be moving along these distributary channels at any great speed. 
and so this means that there is going to be deceleration even before the river water actually hits our lake or sea and so all across our delta we're going to have sediment actively being deposited so some sediment sediment deposition will occur on the delta and some sediment deposition will occur in front of the delta so typically on our delta we end up forming horizontal beds of sediment now these horizontal beds of sediment essentially represent the land surface so they're very often reworked by waves especially and so it's not uncommon to find that these sediments will have ripple marks and maybe in some circumstances they can form dunes as well so you'll have indications of the sediment being reworked by waves especially now another thing that happens is is because this sediment's being reworked by waves what will very often happen is the finer material so the clays and the silts will be pulled away by those waves into deeper water and that means what tends to happen is sandier material gets left behind because the wave can't take that material with it and so it's quite common for these upper layers of our delta to be quite sand rich because they are being reworked by the waves and the waves are removing the very fine clay and silt sized clasts. Now beneath these horizontal upper beds what we tend to get are beds which have an inclined surface and you can see them here they have what's sometimes referred to as a lozenge like shape so they start narrow at one end they broaden out and they narrow up again at the other end. Now, these sets of beds essentially represent material which is being dropped down the front edge of our delta. So material that's coming through these river channels here, and then we know that as our, as our river water actually hits the main mass of our ocean or our sea or our lake, it's going to decelerate very, very fast. And so we're going to get sediment being dumped here right at the edge of our delta. And of course, a lot of that sediment is then going to over time slide down the front of our delta, creating the inclined bedding that we can see here. Now, the finest material, so our clay size clasts, are going to be very difficult to actually get out of suspension because they're so small and light, our water will need to come to a near complete stop before they can actually exit suspension and settle out onto the floor of our sea, ocean or lake. So what's going to happen is we're going to have the sandy material being deposited first, then a lot of these inclined beds are, beds are going to be uh, a mixture of sand and silt sized material, but then our river water, which, con which contains these very fine clay sized class, will tend to move out into the open body of water. And what will happen is, is as our river water decelerates even more, it will eventually come to a stop. And it's at that point when the very fine clay sized material will begin to fall out onto the floor of our sea, our ocean, or our lake. And so you can see there's a steady change in the types of sediments that we have. We have clay-rich sediments here, silty and sandy sediments here, and sandy sediments at the top. And so what we actually have is an upward coarsening sequence. So if you look at this area of our delta here, what we're going to have is we're going to have a sequence of clay-sized, of clay-dominated uh, rocks here, followed by a sequence of silt dominated rocks, followed by a sequence of sand dominated rocks. So the class size is getting larger going up. Now, as we've discussed, as more material is deposited along the front edge of our delta, it's going to continue building outwards into the body of water. And so what's going to happen is, is over time, these inclined beds are going to continue building out and they're going to roll over the top of these clay deposits here. Then over time, we're then going to see the deposition of these horizontal beds over the top of the inclined beds. And so we'll end up with a sequence you know, similar to the one that we can see here, where we have these clay-rich sediments at the bottom, followed by silt-rich sediments, followed by sandy sediments. So are there any other things that occur as we approach base level? Are there any other indications of deposition approaching a base level? Well, there are two other times when we tend to see deposition uh, associated with river systems that are approaching or at their base level. So typically when our river is approaching its base level, it will often lose velocity as we've mentioned. And so it's going to lose energy and so material is going to be deposited. And so a classic example of that would be a floodplain. 
Now, obviously, we know the river itself is going to have velocity. So the water in the channel is moving at speed. It may not be moving very quickly, but it is moving somewhere. In contrast, when our river floods, it deposits water across the floodplain. But because the gradient is so low, that water doesn't really flow anywhere. It just sits in the area. And so this allows the sediment contained within that water to be deposited across the entire floodplain. And so the fact that the water isn't going anywhere really tells us that we're pretty much at the base level for our river. It can't really go anywhere because the ground is so flat. Now, another example of a depositional event that occurs when we have a river channel meeting its base level is an alluvial fan. So in this instance, we can see the valley cut by our river channel right here. And we can see the salt flats right here represent our base level. Now, these salt flats are probably not at sea level, so they are unlikely to be at the ultimate base level for our river. So this is going to be essentially a local base level. Now, we can see that as the river exits the valley, it hits the base level and the sediment is being deposited right here. So this is for a couple of reasons. Number one, obviously, our river is hitting this local base level, so it's going to find it difficult to erode down. The other thing, as you'll notice, is our river is moving from a relatively confined canyon to a broad open plain. So as the water exits onto this open plain, it's going to obviously disperse, it's going to lose energy, and so it's going to deposit sediment. Now, in the case of alluvial fans, the alluvial fan itself, which is this area right here, is typically made of relatively coarse sediment. So we're talking cobbles, gravels, and sands. And this material is transported along the river typically during heavy thunderstorms or during the spring when we have ice melting in the elevated terrain over here. That supplies water that allows the sediment to be transported down the river valley. In, typically in the hotter months, so during the summer, these rivers will often disappear. So deltas aren't the only indication of a river approaching its base level. We will also have the formation of floodplains and alluvial fans occurring, uh, and they will also show us that our river is approaching its base level, be it the ultimate base level, which is sea level, or some kind of local base level. I should point out, by the way, that alluvial fans are associated with arid and semi-arid terrains only. You don't tend to get them in other types of terrains, such as, you know, such as um, mature river systems. All right. Thank you for watching, everybody, and have a good day.